Well, g'day there, it's Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, I'm just going to have a, a, a day off from the shed today, just for a bit of a break. So, what I'm going to make is a tailstock chuck. So, I have this little three jaw scrap piece of chrome bar, a couple of bits of uh, mild steel black bar offcuts. So I'm going to make a, um, yeah, get this chuck set up so I can run it in the tail stock of the lathe. Now, I went to do, or was thinking about doing a job the other day, and it was to do with a piece of hollow bar, and I thought, yeah, it's time to build one of these. So let's swing it down. We'll have a look at our, our plans, what our plan of attack is, and then we'll hop off to the lathe, and we'll crack on with the piece of chrome bar. So the basic design I drew up, it's very similar to what Curtis made over at Cutting Edge Engineering for his one. So we have a, an arbor here, a shaft, Morse taper number three, uh, with an ejection tang on it as well. That way I can run um, sleeves on this to make it fit my other lathe. So I've got one lathe with a Morse taper four and one lathe with a Morse taper five tailstock. So it can be used in those machines as well. So yeah, it's just a basic shaft, Morse taper, a hub, very much similar to like a trailer or wheel hub, a couple of Timken taper roller bearings um, that we have here, uh, 30205, so they're a 52 OD bearing, 25 ID, and we have a couple of oil seals, so we'll put an oil seal here. And that'll run on this raised section of the shaft. The other oil seal will run on the bearing retainer here. And we'll just keep it, I was keep it all together with a, originally I, was, I had drawn it up for a, um, a cap screw like that, a countersunk head cap screw. But I'm going to shy away from that because the hole for the Allen key in these is quite small. And so I'm going to go for a 12 point head. Um, bolt. So, yeah, we'll get these. Oh, these parts here, these two bits of um, mild steel round bar, will form our hub. Now we'll have to weld them together to make one piece. So, anyway, let's get our um, piece of um, chrome bar chucked up, and we'll start on the shaft. Now I did make drawings last night of the other parts, so that's the hub. Um, that was a design change, and that's our little retainer and seal washer for the uh, seal runner for the end, and that's our shaft that we're going to make. So we'll get our piece of bar in. Clock on that just to get it a bit closer.
Got him. It's well within 0.01 of a millimetre there, which is plenty close enough for what we need. If we get a tool set in, we'll get it faced off and a centre drill put in. So we've got a fair whack to come off this. We've got to finish up at 36 mil. And we're 63 mil there. So fair amount to come off. So we're just going to run the lathe on 420 RPM with an eighth hour feed rate. We'll probably start our cuts, probably about two mil depth of cut. We'll see how it handles it. Um, what's unknown to us at the moment is what's going on with the depth of, of any um, induction hardening uh, in this chrome bar. Some it can go down a hundred thou and some it's like there's nothing there. So, And the other thing we have to watch is this there's two spanner flats on here. We don't want to run these inserts on an interrupted cut so it will damage the insert. So we'll get rid of those first. We'll take a deep cut, get underneath all that, making sure the radius of our tool is below the flat there, and then we'll see how it goes.
Okay, that's the first stage roughed out, so we'll show you on the drawing where that ends up. Okay, so there's the end of our bar there, the tailstock ends. We've roughed out this portion here up to here. So we're one mil up on diameter, on, so we're 37 mil diameter on our seal area here. So what we'll do now is we'll rough out this stage here. We'll take this down to about 30 millimeters. We're just up on 30 millimeters. We've got to leave a bit for our radius, and then we'll cut in our Morse taper three, and we'll do these details on the end here too. So this gets machined down and then milled away for the tang. So we're going to turn back 113 millimeters down to 30 millimeters diameter, and so I'll put a mark there at 110 millimeters. So we pull up well shy making sure we've got room to leave for our radius at the end of the Morse taper. I've also switched inserts back to a TNMG. We're on a smaller diameter now, so there's no rough stuff involved, so the TNMG will do that fine. Okay, four mil to come off. Now we machine the end back for the tang, which is this part of the Morse taper. So we machine that back to a diameter of 18 millimeters, back for yeah, it'll be 20 millimeter. Six mil to go. Just under a mil, I'll switch over to the uh, electronic vernius. Here's something which has just dawned on me with our ejection tang. It only has this tiniest pip with a centre hole in it. We have quite a substantial centre hole in that. So what I'm going to have to do is just machine these shoulders back a bit further. Probably another 8 mil would do it. 
just so we don't have a whacking great big center hole in the end of our tang which is not ideal so I'll do that off camera just bring these shoulders back and then we'll get in and have a look at our taper okay to set up to cut our number three Morse taper so the number three Morse has an included angle of 2 degrees 52 minutes 31 seconds or we convert that to taper per millimeter you can go taper per inch if you like and do it imperial there's no difference in the method just one way of doing it in metric and I use both depending on if I've got a metric or an imperial indicator that determines the way I go with these so taper per millimeter on a Morse taper number three is 0 0.0502 uh, millimeters travel on the indicator per millimeter of length on, along your taper. So we take that figure 0 0.0502, multiply it by 50 millimeters, because we're going to measure over 50 millimeters of travel. That'll give us a figure of 2.51 millimeters. Now, bear in mind that's still an included angle, so we halve that, which brings it to 1.255, which is the reading we need to obtain on our indicator when we move our compound. So we'll move our compound 50 millimeters, which is there. It's right on 50 millimeters there, and we are reading off. 1.255 on our indicator. So we'll get the tool swung around and we'll take a few initial cuts. Now I do cheat when I get my 50 millimeters. I have markings down here. That's what these blue lines are for. And I, I have a permanent scribe line down here. And then I just put a light scribe line in for a 50 millimeter. It's a measurement that I use quite um, all the time doing tapers, so it's a permanent mark. So it just lets me travel along at a rapid rate without having to count the turns on the dial. As long as I start on a zero on the dial and finish on a two on the dial, that gives me the 50 millimeters. So we'll get set up, we'll get this tool swung around and chomp out our taper.
Well that was going great, but she started getting a bit chattery up here. We'll just clean that chatter out with a couple of lighter cuts. I think I'll uh, turn this insert around and see how if it improves it. It was cutting great the first few cuts and then it just lost it. Yeah, I'll swap this insert out. Yeah, that was a strange one, I couldn't see any markings on the insert so we'll take another cut and see what happens. Finish is a bit ordinary. I might um, I'll swap the belt over and we'll slip the lathe into a higher speed, and uh, that should pick up on our finish. We'll do then a, um, a, a light cut, then we'll have a test fit. That's better. I'll give that a quick polish. We're still a little bit up on size, but uh, I've got a uh, hollow sleeve Morse Taper 3, so we can use that for a bit of a quick look, see how we're travelling. Feeling good. Let's get some uh, marking blue on it and try it. This is just a uh, generic old um, bearing blue. We're just going to try the taper. Which is way too much on there, so it's just a little bit. Slip her on. 
Oh shit, stuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, before we got stuck, So we're covering from there right through to there. No, that's I'm happy with that. So I don't know if you'll pick that up. That's area blue there, which is unmarked. It's still darker in colour, as is the little bit up there. So But a nice even amount of blue down our sleeve so I'm, I'm happy with that there's no further compound adjustments necessary there so we'll take it straight down to size <laughs> 